Bitcoin remains under 26,000 as investors await fresh U.S. economic data this week. Joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Maple Head of Growth and Capital Markets, Quinn Thompson. Welcome back, Quinn. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good seeing you. So, um, you know, before we get into this whole discussion of uh, some of the the CPI and PPI data that we're going to have come out this week, uh, you're you're kind of looking at the ETF news, and you see that as a as. I, I, as it's kind of the next big thing happening here, particularly uh, a spot e- ETF for, for ETH, you know, we're as close as possible uh, that we've ever been to a Bitcoin spot ETF with the with the latest ruling in the federal courts against uh, the SEC regarding grayscale. Why w- the, the market hasn't really taken off since then. So what is it that you know that the rest of the market doesn't? Yeah, I mean, so the ETF is definitely the, the the biggest news. I'd say holding the crypto markets up today and and probably over the next coming months. The difficult part is it it creates a better conduit for for capital inflows into the space, but you still need that catalyst for those inflows. And if you look at you know interest rates are about up about fifty basis points since uh, Bitcoin's most recent local peak at thirty one k. You know, liquidity and capital inflows continue to kind of decrease. And so we just haven't seen a catalyst for people to get excited. There continues to be quite a few headwinds, whether it's Binance News, other FTX type of sell pressure. Uh, no one really wants to step in. And if you look at the trading action over the last few few weeks and months, you know, it, it tells you that much. It's it's everyone's pretty apathetic towards towards crypto at this stage. Yeah. We're, we're, we're expected to get some PPI and CPI data this week uh, as, uh, you know, obviously it's the end of it, August is now behind us. So we're going to know what's going on there. What exactly, you know, where do you see that falling? Because that, of course, is going to dictate where interest rates are going to go, or at least give a hint as to where interest rates are going to go. What, what's your bet? Yeah, I think the you know I'm not I'm not sure about this exact print, but if you look across the commodity complex, I, I it feels that you know the economy is not as weak as as people might be thinking. You know, labor data has been mixed, uh, inflation data has definitely come down, but but very well could have seen a bottom over the summer and, and commodities due to you know recent recent supply issues and despite all the talk of China and and rest of the world being very weak, uh, you know, you can look to commodities as, as being pretty strong here. And so my gut says, you know, we've probably seen a local bottom in inflation. And and one of the things causing weakness in tech assets over the last couple of weeks is is those rising expectations and, and interest rates coinciding with it. Now, I'm surprised Lawrence didn't ask you this about ETFs. We've had spot ETFs up here in Canada where I'm sitting right now, and the excitement hasn't been there. So, I mean, what do you, do you really think it's going to be this, this big catalyst that everyone is thinking it's going to be given that it's been available in some other parts of the world and the excitement has kind of just been exactly how the markets have looked over the past few weeks? No, that's that's very accurate. I mean, as I kind of said, it, it you know it, it's not an instant repricing of of the space, but you would expect some uplift in prices as you know it creates a you know better better avenue for for capital inflows. If you think across the U.S., there's you know hundreds of billions of dollars managed by RIAs, wealth advisors, and other asset managers who physically cannot access uh, digital currencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum. And so the ETF really allows that access to to be much improved, and and also you know if you think of a well, traditional wealth advisor in in a regional part of the states, they can't make money if they they tell their client to invest in Bitcoin. They have no way to you know it has to be done through traditional uh, investment routes, and and getting an ETF approved will will allow that to be supported in in you know all these different accounts. So I think it is big news. I just I just think there needs to be other. Uh, catalyst to get the space how? going again, and and we'll see. How big? I mean, do you have an estimate on on what you think will ultimately take up uh, the ETFs? How, how big do you think are we looking at here? Because right? I mean, the Canadians haven't been impressive as usual. Yeah, well, the the Bitcoin futures ETF BITO has has been pretty successful, I would say, for the type of product it is. Um, I, I believe that's about a billion. The 
you know, just look to the grayscale uh, GBTC. There's, I believe, about 16 billion at, at today's prices uh, locked up there. So tough to say. The discount's still there, um, you know, and, and so there could be some outflows if if it returns to NAV. But but overall, you know, I, I would expect over the coming years this to be 30, 40, 50 billion, and and um, you know that that's a meaningful size of of the overall crypto and Bitcoin market at, at this stage. And talk to us about some of the issues, challenges, I guess, when it comes to capital flow right now in the digital asset space. Yeah, I mean, this the stable coin supply is probably the easiest gauge you can look to. There's other some fun metrics um, that that some people post, but overall, it's it's pretty bleak. I mean, USDC supply has been been cut in half, which is kind of the Western regulated stable coin. Obviously, Tether has been uh, pretty strong in its growth, which you know take take of it what you will, but overall uh you know investment and you look at venture capital raising uh that it's continues to hit new lows trading volumes continue to hit new lows and so there's just this kind of lack of of excitement and and broader interest in the space i think part of that has to do with the regulatory uh, nature but but you are starting to see the currents kind of shift underneath where some of this you know fluff or, or less value accretive building and and project use cases are being washed out. You know, you're seeing more and more startups kind of shut it down where they haven't found product market fit and, and fail where they haven't been able to raise additional capital. And that's healthy, you know, it's unfortunate, but, but, it, you know, venture capital is a, is a type of investing where you, you hit a home run on one or two of every 10. So I think it's a little return to normal and, and, you know, we're starting to see that capital then flow to the more, uh, you know, accretive and you, real use cases like stable coins, payment rails. And, and that's one bright spot. Transactions across stable coins have continued to increase despite, you know, the broader Bitcoin weakness. So I think that's kind of what will lift us out of this, this bear market is, is, you know, big players like Visa and other payment companies start to adopt these rails. And, and that just continues to onboard new users into the space. Quinn, thanks so much for joining us this morning and taking a look at the markets with us. Yeah, thanks so much. That was Maple Head of Growth and Capital Markets, Quinn Thompson.